Welcome back. Well, Shane Warne's tragic death inspired many Australians to go and see their doctor and check on their heart. Phil Daladarkis is one of them and it may have just saved his life. And I'm happy to say he joins me live now from his hospital bed in Melbourne. Phil, tell us what happened. Well, it doesn't get more real than this, does it, Laura? But uh, about three, four months ago, I was having lunch with some mates of mine and a very dear friend of mine, Simon Feldman, had just got checked as a result of uh, Warney's tragic death. And, and in the discussion, uh, the guys around the table agreed that it was a really good idea. So uh, I got the referral from my GP uh, to the cardiologist that Simon had seen. Uh, that resulted in me having a CT scan where uh, it was a little bit unclear that they thought there might be a blockage, but they couldn't be certain. So uh, the cardiologist uh, put me in for an angiogram yesterday afternoon, four o'clock. And in the course of the angiogram, he found that my the left artery into the heart was 95% blocked. And it's wow. fair to say that uh, Warney's uh, tragic passing has probably meant that uh, I will still be living. Wow, <laughs> Phil, so no symptoms. How do you feel now? No, so I obviously had a number of risk factors, Laura. I mean. Um, I am a little overweight or uh, a lot overweight, depending upon uh, who you speak to. Uh, beyond that, uh, type 2 diabetic for over 12 years, but no symptoms in relation to my heart whatsoever. And uh, that's probably been the, the most frightening thing for me, mm. which led me to do my post on social media last night. Mm. And, you know, I encourage all guys out there, uh, tall, little, short, big, fat, thin, <laughs> otherwise, uh, do go and get checked, speak to your GP. And by the way, it's not just an issue for men, it's also an issue for women. Yeah. And so I do encourage uh, men and women to go and have the discussion with their GP. But obviously it's more of an issue with men uh, at, at, at our age, uh, around my age as well, in my mid-40s. At this point, I want to bring in the Executive Director of Victor Chang Cardiac Research Institute, Professor Jason Kovacic. Uh, Jason, I think Phil already knows this, but just how lucky is he? Yeah, he's pretty lucky. Congratulations, Phil. Um, you've done really well and you did all the right things. Uh, I mean, this is the reality. This is what we see. I mean, men and women, as Phil was saying, are at risk of this problem. Cardiovascular disease and heart disease is the number one killer of people in our society, as Shane Warne really tragically exemplified. So getting a heart check, as Phil went and did, is, is just so critically important. Mm. Phil, how are you going to change your lifestyle? Is this not only, you know, prompted that visit to the doctor and uh, this hospital stay that subsequently followed, but how's your outlook now? Where's your head at? Oh, look, uh, absolutely. It has to change, right? You can't keep doing the same thing and expect a, a different outcome. So, you know, obviously I'm going to have to increase uh, my exercise. I'm going to mm -hmm. absolutely have to decrease my food intake and be a little bit more circumspect about what I'm eating. I did joke with a friend of mine that uh, yum char is non-negotiable, but maybe I'll just have to take a couple <laughs> of less serves of dumplings. Um, look, yum char is t absolutely non-negotiable, but I reckon there might be a way around that. Now, I'm going to let you go, Phil. You look great. Um, you've been a bit hard on yourself uh, during this <laughs> interview, but thank you so much for talking to us this morning. We'll let you get some rest. Thanks, Laura. And just a, a shout out to all the men and women uh, nurses, uh, the cardiologists, and also the GPs out there doing an, uh, an amazing job and a job that's saving lives. And to the people at the Victor Chang Foundation and, and all of our uh, medical centres around the country, thank you to all of you. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that, Phil. Rest up. We'll speak soon. Let's bring in our Professor Jason Kovacic uh, once again. Um, talk us through, I mean, obviously Phil's just one example, but are there other examples of Shane Warne's death really prompting people to go to the hospital. Are you seeing that? Yeah, absolutely. No, we've seen this happens, you know, not infrequently whenever someone prominent dies, or it doesn't even have to be someone prominent, but just someone within a group of friends. It all often prompts a whole group of friends to go and get checked. And uh, we see this all the time. Phil uh, was motivated also by that group of friends he was in. And so yeah. that, that peer pressure thing can be powerful. And, you know, what we're seeing with Phil is this, is this progressive normalisation of men looking after their health and men are notoriously bad at that and don't, you know, we tend to neglect ourselves, but mm. normalising getting checked up, normalising getting heart health checks is, is really important.
Okay, so if you're of a certain age, how old should you be for a start right. if you um, want to go and get one of these checks? Are there sure. any other indicators? Because, of course, we all look at the COVID stories on this program, on others, and think, oh, well, I don't want to clog up the hospital system. Doctors are really busy at the moment. So what's your advice? Sure. So I think of it almost in two levels. It really starts with preventing this whole problem in the first place. And that comes with, you know, checking up for blood sugar, cholesterol, blood pressure. And that is actually now Medicare reimbursable from GPs by what's called a heart health check. So men over the age of, men and women over the age of 45, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people over the age of 30 are eligible to go to their GP to get their risk factors checked. And then if those things are not in order, blood pressure, cholesterol and glucose, they can actually start therapies for those and we can very effectively treat those so obviously preventing the problem in the first place is the ideal way to go if people are now wanting to have a ct scan as phil had done that does require referral to a cardiologist or a specialist and they can base an assessment and a judgment on the need for a ct scan based on risk factors symptoms and other things so it is really that two stage avoiding it in the first place and treating risk factors but then getting the scan done if you're at risk or if you're having symptoms. Okay, so Phil, as he just explained to us, didn't have any symptoms. Is that common? Well, it is. Thankfully, it's not that common, but he was a diabetic as well. Yes. And we know that diabetics, uh, women, and there are certain other groups maybe won't get as many symptoms about, as others. They won't get crushing chest pain and other symptoms. So if people are worried or if they have risk factors as he had, that should be the trigger to go and get checked out. Professor Jason Kovacic, love your work. Uh, you know that. Love the work of the Victor Chang Cardiac Research Institute too. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you.